Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with the Movement System. Today we're going to be talking about motor unit recruitment and the size principle. So we're going to talk about how type 1 and type 2 fibers are activated and we're going to talk about how that applies to exercise. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so when we think about a muscle getting activated, this is really what we're talking about. So you can see here the brain is gonna send a signal through a nerve, so usually through the spinal cord, and then through a nerve to a muscle. Now, if you see here, guys, these this muscle is representing multiple types of muscle fibers. So you can see the red muscle fibers and the green muscle fibers in there, they would make up the entire muscle. So if we zoom in and we think about a cross section of a muscle, meaning if you cut the bicep right in half, and then you look at it, you know, the cross section of that muscle, this is kind of what it would look like. And we call this a mosaic distribution of fibers. So basically there's these larger motor units that encompass more fibers. So here might be like, let's say a hundred fibers where these smaller purple ones might have only, you know, 50 fibers in them. And we call the smaller ones, the type ones. So those are represented in purple here. And then we have type twos in green. And we'll get a little bit more specific to type two A and type two X here in a second. But Basically, within that muscle, we have small and then large motor units, which are just bundles of fibers. So now, if we think about which ones are recruited first, we can look at this chart here. So this is the recruitment, and then this is the force. So low force activity, so say you're just picking up you know, a pencil or something, we're going to look kind of down here. Low recruitment, low force activities would use the type 1 fibers only. So as we're just moving day to day, we're just going to be using the type 1 muscle fibers. Whereas when we're moving larger, heavier objects, something that's heavy, we might start to get into these type 2s. So higher force, say we have to pick up something heavy, we might start to work into these greens here, those type 2A fibers. So really important when we think about recruitment, we always recruit type 1s. And then if all the type 1s are recruited, we go to the type 2 A's. If all the type 2 A's are recruited and we still need more force, then we go to our type 2 X fibers. They're the hardest to recruit and they fatigue the most quickly. So if we're thinking about high recruitment, high force, this might be something like a power lift or an Olympic lift that's really maximal, like a 1 rep max. Whereas like down here might be a 5 or a 10 rep max. And right here is something like a run where you could do hundreds of reps, no problem. So that's kind of how the size principle works. We're going to talk about one exception to this, and that would be the process of selective recruitment. And there's mixed evidence on how much this occurs, but people who are highly trained and have very well-developed neural pathways to their type 2 muscle fibers may be able to selectively recruit type 2A and type 2X fibers before their type 1s with a really high rate of force development. And that, again, comes down to having a really efficient neural pathway between the brain and those high threshold motor unit fibers. So to review, we have our type one fibers activated first for low threshold and low force activities, followed by the type two A fibers start to get activated in that medium, like 10 rep max, five rep max type range. And our type two X's really kick in at the very top of that whenever we're thinking about one rep maxes and, and high recruitment activities such as sprints and jumps little bonus information, we actually have a transition of fiber types with training, and it's not all that intuitive. A lot of times these very high threshold motor units, the type 2 X's, will start to transition to type 2 A's with training, and the reason for that is that type 2 A's are more fatigue resistant. So as we do training, even high threshold training, resistance training, or aerobic training, we start to make our muscle fibers act more like that type 2 A intermediary fiber where it produces high force, high recruitment, but it also is fatigue resistant. So this is kind of the, the, the mid-range, that, that optimal zone for high functioning athletic muscle fibers. So different muscle groups will have different percentages of type one and type two fibers based on the need of that muscle. So muscles like the gastrocnemius for sprinting and the quadriceps for heavy squatting will have higher type two fibers. They don't quite need as selective muscle recruitment, meaning they don't need fine motor control. So type two fibers are, are okay because we can activate those and it doesn't need to be super graded and fine control. Whereas something like an eye muscle or even postural muscles like on your back and finger extensor muscles, they need to have really good small fine motor control and endurance. So they're gonna be highly type one. Something to think about as well 
is that muscles are recruited all or none with the all or none principle, meaning that if we have 100 muscle fibers in this type 2 motor unit right here, either we activate all 100 or we don't activate any, meaning that that nerve either sends a signal or it doesn't. We can't send half a signal to a muscle. So as that action potential moves down and, and activates a motor unit here, all of the fibers within that motor unit are going to activate. All right, guys, so just to review, we're going to activate our type 1 fibers for low threshold endurance activities, move on to those type 2 A's for that medium rep range, and then move on to those type 2 X's for higher threshold, higher force activities. All right, so hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If it was, go ahead and hit the like button. It helps out with other people finding the video. If you want more videos about exercise science and strength conditioning, go ahead and subscribe for more. And you can also click the link in the description below to join the strength conditioning study group on Facebook. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.